I come from a large family, and we um, didn't have a whole lot of money to have us go to college and things. So when I was in high school, I had taken a data processing course, and at that time it was plug boards, were like the operators, the old operator stations you see. And I, it was really interesting to me, the whole thing, and they talked about punch cards and things like that. So um, I knew I couldn't get college education, so I figured the service would be a good option. So I joined the Navy um, right after college, and I mean, right after high school, and I actually went in on the buddy system with a friend of mine from high school. And um, so we actually got to go to boot camp together. And uh, after boot camp, we had our separate, um, went our separate ways because she was a secretary. And when I had applied to be a data systems, I mean, to, to be a data processor, they told me, your mathematics and mechanics are really high. How would you like to be a data systems tech? And I was like, what's that? <laughs> and he said, besides operating the computers, you'll know how to fix them and, you know, work the insides. And I'm like, wow, that sounds interesting. So that's what I went in for. And it was a six-year enlistment, four-year enlistment with a two-year extension after electronic school. So it was very um, encouraging for me. I was homesick. Yeah. You know, I called home a lot. And, but it was interesting because I met a lot of people. I hadn't, you know, branched out from Illinois <laughs> at all. So I, um, there was one night actually in boot camp where the lockers and the cubicles were all rattling and I was like, what is that? And the girl in the bunk above me leans over and goes, them's what we call back home earthquakes. <laughs> Cause I was in California now or Florida actually at the time. I was in Orlando, I went to, um, Orlando, Florida boot camp for women. So, and then from there, I went to California. That's why I said California earlier. But I went to California for my data systems schooling, and it was actually two years long, pretty much. I, w I worked it out one time, and um, I had like basic electronics at one point, and then I went in from from there, we went and learned the basics of data systems, troubleshooting, and things like that. Then what they call C school, you go from there to a specific gear that you learn. So it was, it was really interesting. It was um, quite a step for me, really, being in a small town in Chicago. I, mean, uh, I was actually south of Chicago by 33 miles, so we were in the boonies, basically. So it was a big step for me to take. And, um, it was the first time I'd ever been on an airplane, and it was, it was, you know, frightening in some cases, but I think it really has built my character to accept things more um, on a ease, you know. Um, actually, in data systems troubleshooting itself, people have said to me, how do you have such patience? And I think <laughs> data systems taught me, you know, I can't just rush through it, I've got to think it through and slow down and step-by-step -step process. So it's been, it's been great. My father served, my older sister served, and my younger brother served. So we were all, and my uncle, and I don't know who else. My grandfather, I guess, was in at some point, but not for long. Some of the challenges were being female. I, um, there was one command that I went to that I was the first female at the command, and um, I went in as a, I think it might have been a third class or E4, and um, I worked my way up to first class and ended up being the shop leader, and some of the guys weren't real happy about that, you know, but, you know, them's the breaks, and I um, actually worked really hard. I found I had to work harder than I felt the guys were working to get where I got. But I was ready to do that. The commanding officer, when I got there, actually sat me down and said, I'm gonna treat you just like one of the guys. They're no, no different, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, you just blew it right there. You know, <laughs> you, you didn't sit with the guys, I'm sure, and say that, you know. So it was kind of, 
It was a very interesting situation to be in, but I survived it fine, you know. It wasn't any heartbreaking things. So. Well, the situation is a whole lot different because they go, to, they go on ship and they go to the front lines and things, and I never had that option. Um, I guess if I was a corpsman, I think they were doing females on hospital ships at the time, but not other things. But I, um, our overseas um, stent, because they would do like four years on land and two years at sea. And so they would either put you on a ship or send you overseas. And so my overseas stay was in the Philippines. And it was, I, I mean, I think it was just amazing learning a new culture. Um, from there, I was actually working at the time, because it was the Vietnam era war, um, I was working with the squadron that was going out and rescuing Vietnamese boat people. And it was really interesting because they, what they did was drop sauna buoys with, I know, translated Vietnamese information about, we're sending a ship out to, to collect you and to help you, and drop some um, supplies, food and water for them to get them through. And then we had a refugee camp on the base, which was really, it was heartwarming to know that we were helping what we could, you know, and, and that I was part of that. The weather ugh, in the Philippines, the year I was there, or one of the years I was there, 1979, I think, they had the record-breaking rainfall ever. In three months' time, the, their span of rainy season, they had 86.9 inches of rain. And um, it washed a lot of roads out and things like that. And at the time, my husband and I lived on a base that was 45 minutes away from the base we worked on. And we were getting bused back and forth, and the road in between had washed out. So we get bused to that side of the thing and then get, have to walk around and get picked up by another bus to go back to the other base. So it was kind of, it was, everything was interesting there. I just thought the people were very talented. I always said that if there, if you wanted an air conditioned um, motorcycle, they could be right there and they'd make it. They could, you know, you could draw a little picture of something and they'd make it, no problem. So we had um, magnetic tape that was, it was just these big reels of tape that had the data and information on it that the computers would process and you would print out whatever you needed from it or whatever. Um, they had the, this, the disks, they called them the floppy disks, were like, I think five and a half inches, six inches square. <laughs> and then, you know, we moved on from there to the smaller floppy disks. And then um, now we don't even, know what that is <laughs> so it's kind of it, it's been just fascinating the whole the whole gamut of information from here to there they had um monkeys in the philippines and it was interesting because you couldn't leave anything laying around that might interest the monkey because they were right at it somebody had left i think a box of kleenex on a motorcycle or something and the, the monkey was pulling the Kleenexes out like this, so it was pretty interesting. Um, just different things from a different culture that you wouldn't even fathom by staying in the United States. Also, when I was working with the, um, what, what are they called, the squadron, it was actually Pat Wing 1, Det, QB Point, and they used to do training missions from Pat Wing 1 to another place. And they, if they had room on the flight, they would take, they were allowed to take someone with them. So I ended up going to Taipei when it was Taipei. Um, I went to China. I went to Hong Kong. So it was, it was a very, it gave me so many more opportunities than I even have available to me uh, today because I don't, you know, I don't have that kind of money to travel. So, um, it, it was great, and then it also gave me um, credit because when I got out, I went to civil service job, and I started right off 
with seven years of experience. So it was neat. Before I left the, the command, actually, um, I was trying to leave early because I had extra leave on the books because while I was there, I didn't take leave officially. And so I had extra leave on the books and was trying to come home to um, discharge a little early. And they said, well, if you can write up a troubleshooting book for all the equipment in-house, we'll let you go. You know, and kind of just sideways saying it. But I did it. And they were very appreciative. You know, there were things that I had in my brain that I couldn't really, that I could share, but probably they didn't keep on a regular basis. So it was it made me proud to be able to do that. Also, when I was in the Philippines, there was, um, I think it was the JFK had come in port. And um, it was a um, carrier. And... Um, they had a problem with their radar, and their radar men could not figure it out. And they said, would you like me, you know, would you be willing to go and look at it? And I was like, well, I don't know anything about radar equipment, <laughs> but okay. And I actually ended up fixing it, which was like, I couldn't even believe it. So I think it, it, was, it was very, and I got accommodation for it. Nowadays they get pins for awards for different things, pin awards. We got accommodations, just a letter that, in our record that said, you know, job well done. Actually, before I went in, the, the um, buddy that I went in with, her parents didn't want her to go in because they had heard that all the women who joined the Navy were lesbians. So they thought down of her trying to go in, you know, and I think that that stigma had been placed on women who were going out and doing those kind of jobs, whereas now we're free to do whatever we need to, you know, or, or want to. I think we hold an example as women to show that we can do these, these things. You know, there are, there are some women who failed at it, <laughs> you know, and I know them personally, but they, um, they were in a different mindset than I re that I feel I was in. And they, um, they didn't want to uphold the standard that I felt I should just as a person, not necessarily only as a female. And um, I think that just living, living a normal life to its fullest, but not creating um, issues, I think is one of the biggest things. If you don't create an issue that, you know, is brought on by yourself, you know, if there's an issue where something where you, freedom of speech kind of thing, if that, that's different. But I'm talking about creating issues within yourself where you're not, not doing the work you should be doing and things like that, then it's not going to be as easy. So I think, you, you know, you have to hold yourself to a higher standard also. I've often thought, you know, gee, if only I stayed in, blah, 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 because they actually had talked to me about going from enlisted ranks up through chief into the officer's ranks, you know. They said, we really would like you to go on, and, you know, and I, but I was ready to get out. My husband and I were being stationed in two separate places, which now I think they're not doing that. They're putting them together. So they were going to station me in Brunswick, Maine, and him in Hawaii. So it was like, how far apart can you get? So we both ended up getting out at that point. But they, they've worked hard. Now they have, they used to, women, once they got pregnant, they used to get discharged. So now women, they have pregnant uniforms. They have uh, maternity uniforms. They have um, so many more benefits for women as, as the class of women itself that, than they did when I was in. I think I take with me to be open-minded about different people and places. Like the Philippines was such a big learning thing for me. And the, the people that I met too that were even from the States that were different than I had experienced, Texans and things like that, that, that um, you see the different cultures of different people. And I think if you keep your eyes open about this, you realize how people are different but the same. And I think that's one of the biggest things. We're, we're all human but we're different, but that doesn't make us bad. 
We're just different. I have a pride that, you know, my heart just about jumps out of my chest. One of the things that they've now done is um, veterans can salute during the Pledge of Allegiance. And I was like, that touched my heart. I, I, you know, instead of just standing with your hand, you can salute, you know. And I, I just thought that was awesome, you know. Um, I loved being in the uniform and loved seeing people in uniform, respect um, for all that are in uniform. I'm really proud to be here. I, um, when people say thank you for your service, I always say I'm glad to have served, and I truly am.